Okay. So um, I will be talking to you guys about a project that we're just starting at NECAPS. It's very much in its infancy um, and something that I'm really excited about. I'm hoping this presentation can be both an opportunity to talk to you guys about what we're doing, but also I'd like this to be very collaborative. Um, so what I'm doing is the uh, data snapshot of food processing and safety in the Northeast. And this project is really conceived of to support NECAF's projects and NECAF stakeholders. And so I really want to hear from you guys about how this project can best support your needs, but I'll dive into a little bit of what it is. If I can click. Oh no. Oh, there we go. Sorry, folks. Okay. So um, an essential part of our work is finding out how we can best support uh, small and very small processors and what food processing looks like in the Northeast. Without that essential information, we're sort of dead in the water. So what we're trying to find out is who, where, how many, how much, what are people making, what are their problems? Uh, there's no one place to answer all of this. Um, there's a lot of threads in different places and different reporting. Um, documentation is always gonna be a challenge and that's sort of what we're up against. Um, one of the biggest places that we find this challenge is in writing things like grant proposals or figuring out as we develop new projects, how is this evidence backed? How can we demonstrate that there's this need? And then how can we best support processors based on the data that we're seeing? So the idea came about to create this data snapshot, to create a collection of a lot of this raw information that people can refer to in one place to be able to understand, <clears throat> sorry, what processing and what food safety looks like specifically in the Northeast, because it's going to be very different from other places. So there's sort of the three levels that this project exists on right now. And again, we're in the early phases. It's uh, uh, very early in the understanding of what data we need to collect, where to collect it, what it's going to look like. Um, so the biggest level of this is sort of what I talked about is justifying NECAFs and partner projects by demonstrating the needs. We're going to do this by looking at what themes, trends, deficiencies, and needs there are in Northeastern food processing. What are sort of the commonalities that we can support, that we can help correct, that we can kind of work with? In the most literal sense, this exists by creating spreadsheets of major food processing metrics for the Northeastern region to actually look at like how many people are doing X or Y and sort of what that looks like. So I've started to do some of the digging and sort of look at some of the numbers and things. Um, some of the things that we thought were particularly valuable to collect information on is um, what are different states doing? What are we seeing for different product types? Um, what are some of the economic factors like profitability and business success? Um, and that really plays into, as I mentioned below, recalls and things like that. Uh, what is the inspectional data that we're seeing? Um, because I think especially in supporting processors, we really need to understand what they're seeing. Um, and then what data are we seeing for workers and how can we better support workers? So some of the places uh, that I've been looking um, First and foremost was the University of Minnesota's uh, state level food systems indicators project. Um, this was really one of the sources that helped inspire this project, but the University of Minnesota for several years has been going through the agricultural census and pulling a lot of data that is really useful just in terms of numbers to understand what food processing and agriculture generally looks like. Um, they've said that they're not going to continue updating this project, which just sort of creates a bigger need for us to step in and fill some of those gaps as well. Um, other places that I've been looking are, of course, the USDA, both the Ag Census and the Economic Research Service. Uh, checking the FDA website, their data dashboard is wonderful. Um, CDC Wonder for uh, specifically like health and safety and labor statistics, and then the Bureau of Labor Statistics as well. So those are some of the places I'm pulling from. I know that there's ones that I don't know about or that I'm missing. And so that's something I would love to hear about from you guys, especially. Um, but here's sort of an early look at what I've got going on, um, what this project is looking like. So there are 14,782 processing facilities in the Northeast. I've got it uh, broken out here by state 
for what's where. So you can see the density is, of course, most concentrated in New York. I guess technically density is not, but the total number is. Anyways, um, so the 14,782 processing facilities represents 17% of all food processing facilities in the U.S. Um, these facilities have 352,721 employees. Um, of the 14,000 and change, uh, only 531 of these facilities have registered as qualified exempt, which is a pretty surprising uh, difference. The 300, or 531 is only 3.6% of Northeastern food processors. And these are the things that I'm sort of more interested in finding through this project is that disparity I think is very telling and can hopefully be something that we can really benefit from. Um, a few more small, and I apologize, I know these charts are very small, is more meant to be a proof of a concept than really to, to dig into this data today. Um, but from the FDA, um, this is all of the violations mentioned in their reporting data that's available on their website. So you can see the different subject areas. <clears throat> the biggest one we're looking at is sanitary operations um, with just shy of 100 uh, reports of it. In uh, This is 2019 data because I wanted to go pre-COVID um, and specifically for the Northeast. So this is very telling, I think, for areas that are in need of most support, areas that we can really look to better support processors. Um, my other chart here I've got from the uh, USDA Economic Research Service, and that's from 2019 to present, what are the most sold commercially prepared foods by subcategory? And so by looking a little bit at what's popular, what we can see uh, is most trending can also be very helpful helpful for very specific and more tailored support of different subject areas. And that's something I have struggled to find a lot of information on in the past. And it's made me very curious about what can we learn from this information and what is out there. Uh, so this is a very quick run through of the data. Uh, I'm trying to get us out of here before lunch. Um, but just to sort of show you a little bit of what this project looks like so far, what shape it's sort of taking. Um, but what I would love to hear from you guys is, first and foremost, is this a project that resonates with you? Is this something that you guys could see implementing into your work? Um, and if so, what information is difficult for you to find that you think could really be beneficial? Um, do you have other recommendations for me for places to look, things that look like? Um, do you think spreadsheets are sort of the best way to do this? I realize that's a very nitty gritty question. We do not have to dig into it today. Um, but also, is there anything I can clarify for you guys about this project or any questions I can answer? That was a lot. I apologize for running through it so quickly. And hi, I'm Christina Wormold. I'm with UMass and I'm going to be just kind of running the Q&A uh, for this section as well. We have about five minutes so we can dive into as much as we can in that time. Um, but we can just start with the first question, just is the project worthwhile? Does anyone have any feedback on that? You can feel free to unmute yourself and just kind of give a shout um, or you can put it in the chat. I'm getting a lot of what responses, it, what, yes. Definitely. What is the end result of uh, the project? I mean, is, is it, what, what, who, what is, what's the end result for? Yeah, um, so the end result would be uh, a document or spreadsheet that gives numbers and just trends that are sort of ideally most applicable to us as we develop projects and do research for food processors in the Northeast. And so the idea is just to be able to very quickly have context for a different project, for what you're working on, for what you're looking for. Um, and so I think realistically, the best way to present this is just a spreadsheet, but I would also be happy if it's worth it to people to create something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to make some visualizations to do sort of a more in-depth report. In the chat, I have a question. Um, can you just please show the, um, the source of the data page again? Um, yes. Just for that visual. For um, this one of places, Dave, does that 
reach your your expectations? Is that the slide that you would wanted to see? Yeah, that was the one I was uh, asking about. Okay. So mm -hmm. thank you. Um, yeah. And I know Amanda, you have your hand raised. I want to address to, the to answer the question that Annie asked, if it's valuable or relevant for for me personally, this information is helpful simply because the audience that we're trying to reach is really hard to reach, and so as an and demonstrating that this is a real problem, as um, in my experience, when I've been asking for funding to support this target audience. I have been rejected by grant funders saying this isn't a problem. There's no demonstrated evidence that there's a need here, which is um, limiting in terms of being able to get the financial resources to actually cater to reach this audience and give them the handholding that is needed. And so this type of information gives me the demonstrated evidence to back up why you should give us funding to support said problem. So that's just my perspective. And Andrea, um, you have your hand raised as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so my response is mostly regarding the format of the report. I do think a spreadsheet would be good, but definitely putting in macros for people who aren't as Excel savvy might be useful so that they can break it out by their specific product type might be useful. Mm -hmm. And then making making that report easy and neat to print would also be critical for reaching out to plain set processors because they will not use a computer. So um, making sure that, you know, you can do both a soft copy, you can sort of target in that soft copy, and then you can generate hard copies for people who will not use computers would be really, that would be really easy, sort of having an Excel file, but being able to tailor that Excel file and print it out for people who would prefer printed is really probably the best way to do it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the goal of this project is really to save NECAP's partners time in trying to back, find backing and, and um, numbers for their projects. And so, yeah, I wanna ensure it's very accessible. Um, to one of the things I've run into, um, for instance, with the USDA Economic Research Service is you can get data broken down by food type or you can get data broken down by state and they have the combined information, but because it's a proprietary software, you have to seek them out directly and get behind the scenes to actually get this cumulative information. And so that's something I'm really interested in doing is like this legwork that's gonna be way too much work for somebody just trying to get a number for a project, but that if I can make accessible is something that they would benefit from. And that's sort of the question is, you know, is this a good use of NECAP's time to do this legwork to provide this specific type of support? Right, and we have one more question um, or two more questions in the chat that we can kind of go through quickly. Um, one is how do you reach out to the community and, um, yeah, I, I actually think that that's it. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay. So how do you reach out to the community and kind of engage them in this process? That's a good question. Um, I think this is a great first start. And if anybody would like to chat during the networking session uh, at the end of the day, I would love to dig into this in more depth. Um, I can also certainly reach out to people. I think um, probably this whole project will be housed on the clearinghouse at the end of the day. And so fortunately, we have a network through the clearinghouse where I can also sort of figure out more what people are looking for in greater depth um, and sort of tailor this project a little bit more as it develops. Right. So we are about out of time. Um, so next is the poster session, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you all so much for your questions. If you have any other questions, Annie will always take them offline or on the networking session at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I also, yeah, just wanted to give people a heads up. There is a networking component of the poster session. So for the next hour is a really great chance to actually speak with the poster presenters and take advantage of that opportunity. And then we'll have lunch and we will be back at one o'clock. So I'll see all of you guys then. <laughs>